okay. Well, the energy is just going to keep flowing. I know whenever Chief Phil enters the room, we are going to be inspired and it's going to get intense and beautiful. And it's going to just help open your heart. Right? Chief Phil delivers a powerful message. And let me just tell you a little bit about him. Hereditary Chief Phil Lane Jr. is an enrolled member of the, I hope I'm saying this right, and correct me, Dakshi, if I'm saying, Yang Tan? Yeah, Yang Tuan. Yang Tuan. Dakota yeah. and Chickasaw Nations, <coughs> and is an internationally recognized leader in human and community development. He has extensive experience in his own cultural traditions, is an award-winning author and film producer, and holds master's degrees in education from National University, public administration from the University of Washington, and was awarded a global fellowship to attend the Institute of Arts Administration Summer Intensive, Harvard School of Business, Harvard University. Wow, I didn't ever know that about you. That's incredible, learning something new every day. I have had the honor to travel with Chief Phil on a couple of incredible journeys. We first met in Ethiopia um, a few years ago on a Unity Earth journey, and immediately I knew we were family reconnecting and uh, carrying forth our missions together on this planet at such an important time. Chief, I turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much, Tosa. Thank you so much. And I want to thank every person, beginning with Sister Jenna right up the line, Brother Scott, hosting everyone for sharing, because it was like a beautiful tapestry unfolding. And I want to share that from my depths of my heart, I believe that with Enlightening Our Way Together, in this 2022, we've embarked on a nine-year plan, a nine-year vision. The vision of that nine years, the goal of that nine years is the end of war and the beginning of peace. What does that mean, the end of war? It means that the nation states of Mother Earth before or by 2030 will come together out of necessity and by binding treaty, end war upon Mother Earth. Now, how that's going to exactly happen, I'm not sure. But I do know that we are awakening. In fact, I thought to myself, the naming of this program, Awakening, is exactly what's happening. And <clears throat> we can see that, that not just ourselves, but you can see, if we know with Unity Earth, I know they have the same vision. You see the drive that's gone on that's really thank, so thankful for the work. You can see the charter of compassion. We have the guiding principles, our 16 indigenous principles for building a sustainable, harmonious world. You know, all the different foundations of all our efforts. If you really look at the foundation, the principles, we're in unity. We're in unity. So what's our challenge? I believe our challenge at this time is to really get down to the foundation of this nine-year plan. And that foundation of this vision is to understand fully that each and every one of us is a sovereignty, ancient, imperishable, and everlasting. And that's how we're born to this world of time and space. And even more so, at the foundation, at the very foundation of rural peace, at the foundation of the transformation of, to a new global society, not one alluded to by all these deals where, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, a few people take care of everybody. We're talking about something based on this understanding of justice. And so we think to ourselves, okay, what is that? And that is the understanding of the prior unity and oneness of our human family. The prior unity, that part when we meditate, when we close our eyes and we go back to that place where that pure potentiality we talked about Pure potentiality is forever because the actualization of potentiality creates more potentiality. It's endless. We were one from the very beginning, from one seed with all of creation intimately related. And that's why the natural laws governing the physical universe are everywhere in the universe. 
the atomic chart. That's how come we're able to begin to understand this physical place of time and space we live in. But as we've talked about, we are way, way more than that. We are way more than this physical earth suit here. And so here we are getting ready to embark on this journey to 2030. The UN Sustainable Goals are with us. Many others are with us. And we can, we, if we choose to, we can participate. We can participate in this adversarial partisan political process, which is collapsing. Because it's not based on the understanding that every single human being is one with all other human beings. And the hurt of one is a hurt of all, and the honor of one is honor of all, which requires removal of all prejudice of any form, of any form, anything that causes us to feel ourselves better than or less than somebody else as another human being. In fact, I was thinking about the world of names, how we have to go beyond the world of names and titles. And so that's why I want to say, you know, I want to be just Brother Phil, Uncle Phil, because one of the great teachings of our Dakota people said, we must not rest until we make everybody we know, a brother, sister, father, mother, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, grandfather, grandson, brother, sister, then we'll know exactly how to treat them. We'll know exactly how to treat them. And that means that no matter if you're 77 winners, you're 25 winners, the journey is, is the same. And that journey is right here, right here. And you know, it means as well as a human family, seven billion human beings, each caring for their lives as much as we care for our life. And if we wanna think, we don't think that's different, try to harm somebody's children from another culture. It'll show you real quickly how much we treasure each of us that life. So here we are, seven billion human beings on this mother, beloved Mother Earth. And we can see at the present time, this lack of understanding spiritually that we are one human family and the herd of one is a herd of all, which means just basically that there should be no human being on the face of Mother Earth today going without water, children today while we're sitting here in this beautiful, beautiful space to have the opportunity to talk about these next nine years, to talk about then the 25 that'll go to uh, 2047, because I think it's a 25 year vision. The first is the end of war. And the way this is moving, and that's why I'm saying we go into that side, the prophecies are very clear. And we have that you know, all documented well, but that's the thing. This understanding that we're one human family needs to be taught in every school, everywhere. It needs to be proclaimed. We are one human family. And even more so, I really love this new book Brother Gary Zukoff has written, The Universal Human. We are universal humans with all the richness of all that have gone before us because each and every one of us is and are the spiritual representative of all that have gone before us. Now, some of us might have a hereditary role or whatever, but we have to even go beyond that. We have to really, truly, first of all, understand we are one human family and not allow any divisions. That doesn't mean we don't respect each other. But I'm talking about in a way that, that um, in any way causes us, even though we have all these principles we all agree to. I'm sure you wouldn't go through the 16 indigenous principles of building a sustainable harmonious world, we'd all agree. Or the 16 articles of our international treaty to protect and restore Mother Earth, most would agree. Or when I look at the Earth Charter, I agree. Or I look at uh, the Charter of Compassion, I agree. Or Sign Network, their foundation, which happens to be the 16 principles, I agree. The thing is, one thing is agreeing on these principles. Another thing is being these principles. I think that's what we're called to be in 2022, to be these principles, to be this way. That means that I need whatever I carry around from my own intergenerational trauma, the fact my mom and dad 
went to Indian boarding schools. I was born in Indian boarding schools. So what? I mean, what I mean is so what? It, it was a lot. But everything our human family's been through is time to let go. All pre preconceived ideas. We are in a new day, a new time. And it's going to take brand new relationships. What served us in the past is not going to serve us for the future. And so what I see is stand in our strengths. Stand in our strengths. Those spiritual strengths that each and every one of us have. And we've heard all evening, stand in those strengths. Move towards the positive alternative we wish to create without giving away our energy fighting the negative. I want to close with this, again, my Thanksgiving. And I'm 100% I'm with you. But I want to just share. I, I, I thought to myself, you know, get to be 77 winners. You realize, like my dad said, we're only here for a short time. We're only here for a very short time. Very short. And you find that out. <laughs> I'm sure I'll find it out even more as I go along. But I just want to share. This is, these are the insights that have come to me from reflecting on the world spiritual, from the Mahabharata to the Quran to, to the Zindavesta to uh, the Kitabi Agan, those very all those very holy books, plus visiting with elders. This is my understanding of who we are. This is important. Who are we? That's the question I think we have to really look inside and answer ourselves here in this first year of this nine year plan to end war. Our soul is independent of and the very source of our body's existence. If our body is destroyed, our soul and spirit remain unharmed. Our soul, our human spirit, is independent of our physical body. Our soul is free and sanctified beyond this physical plane of time and space. So important to remember. All the powers that distinguish us as human beings, reason, memory, abstract thought, creativeness, inventiveness, willpower, are all property of the soul, not the body. A love that anyone have had, may have had for anyone will not be forgotten in the spiritual worlds, nor will we forget the life we had in this physical world. In the spiritual world, we will recognize one another. We will seek union, a spiritual union. The relationship for our soul with our body is like the connection between a lamp and a mirror. If the mirror is polished and perfected, the light of the lamp appears. If the, if the mirror is broken or covered with dust, the light remains concealed. Our rational soul, the human soul, does not descend into our bodies or exist through our physical bodies. It is just the opposite. Our soul is the very substance and foundation upon which our body depends for existence. The soul has no gender, race, ethnicity, or class. This reality makes all forms of prejudice, whatever they may be, intolerable and acceptable. The soul is not divided, it's reflection of the oneness of our creator. Last one here. Our soul is endowed from our beginning in this physical world of time and space with its own individuality. Our soul does not acquire it because of our body. The individuality and identity of our soul are strengthened in this physical world through our spiritual tests and challenges. So this is the beginning of this incredible nine-year plan, nine-year vision. All the prophecies back it up. We are at that time, as Sister Jenna said, that all the visionaries, seers, Spiritual teachers, spiritual messengers have prophesied and foretold for thousands of years. We are here now. We all, each and every one of us, have been called to this vision. And especially, I want to reach out to my elders of my age. Because we, we are right now on this Mother Earth, those primarily responsible for the mess we find ourselves in. My, my generation. So... I think I probably, I don't know how long I've gone off, but, you know, I just want to share that much and say, so thankful for this awakening. It is the time of awakening. Thank you. Well, Phil, it, we love you so much. And again, when Chris and I were putting the show together, it's like, okay, for our first show for the awakening world, we've got to bring on Brother Chief Phil. Uh, and I'm excited. You've got a brand new website. This is it. This is the first time you're showing your yes, new website yes, yes. to the world. Tell us about it. Well, um, my nephew, Michael Karras, Karras 
uh, has been working on this. It's just kind of in, in, its, in its implementation stage. I think it go up, but we're really focusing on that there is the dawning of a new global civilization. This really looks at what do we do to, to fulfill this? What are the plans? What does it look like? What are the prophecies? Because the prophecies are clear. When we come from oneness, we can see certain guiding principles emerging, but we also see literally institutions. So that's what it's focusing on, this new global civilization that we're all working on.